just a quick disclaimer. I didn't write a lot of this uh, firmware software that I'm going to demonstrate. Um, quick thank you to all these people here. So, hi, uh, my name's Hashem. I'm based in Brisbane, and this is Queensland. And we're all the way over here in the USA in San Francisco, so very long flight to get here. Um, yeah, that's what we're saying. Long flight. I'm going to be talking about Adi and firmware, being firmware. Um, one of the other attendees also came from Australia, and they saw that on their entertainment screen. Um, my day job, I work at OpenGear using open source firmware. Um, we do smart out-of-band console servers, which also do fa fail over to Celia. So as I was saying before, I'm not going to be talking about Marty, but Arty. Um, Arty's a FPGA development board. Easy way to remember, Marty without the M. Um, and the main reason it, you would use an FPGA maybe for most people here, um, designing, building a microcontroller out of an FPGA so you don't have to do a lot of the stuff in hardware. And for those of you who don't know what an FPGA is, a uh, field programmable gate array. Uh, what's a gate? Well, put in two inputs and get an output, NAND gate, NOR gate. Um, go a bit further on from that. FPGAs are built up with these things called LUTs. So in an IS-40, you would have a LUT like this. Put four inputs, get an output. Get enough of these, and you can build up a microcontroller, CPU, anything in hardware. That's about as much depth as I'm going to go into on FPGAs. Why do you want to use an FPGA? Um, some common examples, arcade emulation, or computers from 30, 35 years ago. Um, the one on the left is a mini MIG, uh, Mr. board. Spy Spy, most of the people in a couple of talks before were talking about this. So you would use it for a, a Spice Bay was developed for time of check, time of use attacks. Uh, you can also use it for monitoring your spy bus or as a replacement open source version of a Dediprog. Any other reasons you might use a FPGA? You have some other niche thing that you need, really fast turnaround, uh, low volumes. A common example that is used in open source Conferences in Australia, particularly PyCon and LinuxConf. Uh, there was a guy called Tim that created the HDMI to USB device. Um, so custom hardware. You can get the Gerbers, everything on GitHub for both these boards. The one on the left is a Nomado Opsis, and the one on the right is a NETV V2. Um, it connects over PCI. Essentially, for conferences like this, people give presentations, hook up their own laptops, and you want to capture it, stream it to YouTube, etc. Um, anyway, going back to the HDMI to USB, after three years of designing it, they used the, uh, <coughs> the vendor tools and stuff from Xilinx mainly. And a lot of this stuff was very slow to get working. So they could capture stuff over USB, nothing over Ethernet. Buffering didn't work. The licensing was complicated. Um, Tim being Tim thought, OK, let's uh, use Python. Everything, when it comes to Tim Ansel, he loves Python. So uh, Lightx is a fork of MyGen. Uh, so instead of writing. Uh, you know, generic Verilog or VHDL, you can write Python to put together your blocks, um, but you still need some hardware understanding. It's good if you have an electronics engineering background or uh, have done digital design before. Uh, so with MyGen, you, it's a hardware description language. You can use it to design a full system on chip. Uh, add in soft CPU or other peripherals. So with uh, LightX, it currently supports a bunch of soft CPUs, 
some of the lesser known ones are Lattice Micro, Open Risk. I've heard some other people at the conference talking about this. Uh, there are currently three Risk V uh, CPUs supported, and somebody's working on Power Nine. Uh, still, enough, still doesn't sound like enough to use LightX. Debugging hardware is hard, so one other reason why you might use LightX instead of another uh, vendor platform is to increase inspectability inside the FPGA. So instead of having a soft CPU inside the FPGA, you can add a bridge in LightX and just work on your peripheral um, and everything else there, ROM, DDR, flash, that's on the board. And instead of, instead of debugging it on the device, you can use the bridge to debug over USB, over Ethernet. Uh, so Tim created this thing called LightX Built Environment. Uh, it's a Python environment that sets up all the cross-compilers, firmware building, board programming, etc. That's the URL you can find it at. And anyway, moving on to RISC-V. So uh, a lot of people have been talking about RISC-V at this uh, conference. Um, there's a 32, 64, and 128 bit versions of RISC-V. There's some extensions for floating point, bit manipulation, etc. A couple of people are using it. Uh, the main guys would probably be Sci-Fi, some people from Western Digital, and some other companies here. Um, some other countries are using it because of trade war. Uh, compiler and operating support is good, and it by using RISC-V, you can concentrate on your niche. Uh, so the synopsis I gave originally for this was about the SBI and RISC-V. Uh, there's a best of a bunch of functions and experimental and vendor extensions. So instead of having a UART, you would run your uh, console through the SBI and then you can redirect it like you would over a BMC. Um, so to give a quick demo on Linux on Latex, currently uh, we have it on a VEX RISC V uh, soft core. It works in both QEMU and hardware. Some peripherals need to be worked on a little bit more, and the MMU list version currently doesn't work. Um, so inside Linux, spy flash doesn't work. We're using it inside the bootloader. GPIO doesn't work inside Linux and DMA doesn't work inside Linux. Uh, so this is a quick demo of it running lifetime. It boots from uh, spy, trains a memory, grabs the rootfs and kernel from flash, boots up. Um, RISC-35 32-bit uh, processor, 128 megs of RAM. So uh, moving on to some other distractions related to this. Um, FUPI, so FUPI is Python describing the hardware, running MicroPython. Uh, you can go to that URL if you're interested in that a bit more. So, and FOMU, if you're interested in uh, RISC-V and you want to play with, but you don't want to spend the money to run a full Linux system, this is an open source hardware project that you can buy for about 45 US dollars if you want the production version. I've got some hacker boards. If anybody's interested, come and see me and I can give you a board. Um, or, yeah, either of us. <laughs> Any, anybody else want to raise their hand if they're giving them out? No? Uh, in the corner there as well? Okay. Um, Icebreaker is another FPGA board. Why would you use an FPGA? This is hooked up to a LED panel playing uh, Rickroll. You can buy this for about 70 bucks. 
and the ULX3S designed by some guy, guys in Poland. Um, this is a Lattice ECP5. Uh, this is what they use to run Spy Spy for the time of check, time of use attacks. Depending on how many gates you need, you can buy the cheaper version, I think is about 25,000 gates for about $60, and the uh, 85,000 gate version for about 200. And someone else in Australia is also working another ECP5 board. This is a feather form factor, um, similar to a size in a, a, to an Arduino, uh, not currently available, but we might get further on that. Uh, and if you're interested in RISC-V, there's a competition closing next week or the week after next. Um, win up to 5,000 euros, a, a high five unleashed board and an expansion board, if you can do that. Um, Google it if you want more information. And if it's anybody's interested in this, come see me at Hackathon or shoot me an email. You can find me on any of the socials at Futaris. Um, and other than that, you should be able to find me at uh, LinuxConf in Australia, in the Gold Coast. Uh, pretty much just down the road from where I live. Uh, there might be a Tim Videos Hackfest the week before, if you decide to come early. Right, so if you have questions, uh, please queue up at the mics again. I'm really sorry, I was in a meeting and I missed this talk, most of it, I apologize. But what of the boards you showed, I might have missed them. Are there any that do RV64? Uh, um, so if you buy an RD that's 100T, okay. you can run the rocket. Okay. Um, but I think that's probably about $200. And the other one, the ULX, ULX, sorry, UL 3X, uh, if we go back a couple of slides, mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. um, the higher end version of that, you probably can run it. This one also has a completely open source uh, bitstream synthesizer. Oh, nice. Right. Um, these guys have a reverse engineered it. And Arty may have something by the end of the year. Okay. Um, but currently using the vendor tools. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah. LinuxConf is uh, 13th of January to 17th of January if anybody wants to come to Australia. All right, then thank you very much.